Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you one of my favorite graphic design platforms of all time called Canva. And I've been using Photoshop for 15 years and I love Photoshop, but if you're a beginner, it's a little bit harder to learn Photoshop. I have a full course on Photoshop even just to teach people how to get started with it. And I have a beginner's guide too. So you could compare the two. But Canva is really for anybody that doesn't have any skills in graphic design and it walks you through creating just about anything in the world of graphic design. So you could, for example, make YouTube thumbnails. You could make things for Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, any graphics for those. You could make brochures, flyers, posters, ton of other options. Even video creation is now part of Canva. So you can make little short videos like commercials for your business, right? Right inside of the Canva platform. In this video, I wanna create a very linear guide of using Canva if you're a complete beginner. So click the link in the description below, jump into Canva, and we'll get started. And Canva has a free plan, okay, that's what I'm gonna show you here, and it has some paid plans that I will explain at the end of the video and compare. But to sign up for the free plan, as soon as you click the link, just press sign up over here and create your free account. And they do have an app too, but I have a completely dedicated video to using Canva on iOS, on iPhones, and on Android phones, so I'll put that below as well. So you could watch that to learn how to use it there. But they do sync up, it's the same account, so whatever you do on your phone, it will happen on canva.com. And here I am inside of my account, and I just wanna show you the homepage before I press create a design and show you how to design because you could actually pick something here that will make everything else easier. What I mean is everything is broken up into categories. So you could click social media, for example. If you know right now you're trying to make an Instagram post and it will actually show you the dimension, this is the pixel ratio, this is the size of the graphic design, okay? So different things require a different size. Instagram story is square, so 1080 pixel by 1080 pixel. TikTok is different, 1080 by 1920, because it's vertical. Some things are horizontal. So instead of figuring out the size of what you need to create, this tells you that. So sometimes I just go over there and let's say, let me go to marketing, for example. Let's say I wanna create a Facebook ad post and I don't know what that graphic size should be. It's going to tell me, okay? Even for video, I don't know what a poster size should be. Well, it says 18 by 24 inches in this case, not pixels. Logo 500 by 500, you get the idea. This tells you the size. So you could start from there instead of basically trying to figure out what size you should create a post. I'm gonna go ahead and press create a design, but you should explore this homepage. It's very, very useful for a way to get started. And when I press create a design, it's gonna actually tell me again what I should choose here. And again, if I know what I'm going to choose, I could choose it here or search for it or I could create custom size down here. I'll do that in this case, and I'm gonna do 1920 by 1080. That's HD video. I also create my YouTube thumbnails this size, and that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. I'll press create. And here inside of Canva, this is where our design is going to take place. So we could do two things. We could start completely from scratch. You see this is this white canvas is my blank area. Everything is going to take place over here once I create it. Or if you look on the left side here, there is something called templates. Templates are things that Canva designs for you that you could just pick. Here, I'll just click this one for example. And I'll click, let's say I'll click this one right here. There you go, there is your design that you could edit. Okay, so these are templates. I love templates because especially if you don't have any design skills by just clicking these and getting this for videos or for photo design, it makes it really, really easy and you could search for templates. So that's why I think this is on top because it's encouraging you to use templates to get started. In my case, I'm actually gonna press this undo option right here a couple of times and I'll go back to nothing on a blank canvas because I wanna show you how to create from scratch. But you should explore templates, especially if you don't have design skills because this is created by professionals and things look really good already, okay? So it's a little bit easier to just edit these rather than creating from scratch, but I'll show you how to create from scratch. So this is the most powerful part of Canva right here, the left side. You have templates, 
you could upload anything from your computer here, or if you're using the phone, you could upload anything from your phone, like photos and videos. You could click photos to choose things that Canva actually helps you find, like photos. There's millions of different photos. Some are free and some require the paid plan. Elements are things like shape or these type of different stickers, a lot of different options available. I love this page. Text, very, very useful, especially when you add text with a photo, you could create something really special here. Audio and video are related to creating a video with Canva, which you could do. I'll make a dedicated video for the video creation process inside of Canva, but those two are for that. So you could choose a background, for example, and tell a story that way. And background, you could actually change the white background to be anything else, like a texture background like this, okay? So that's all these options over here. Now, let's go to photo. And let me go ahead and undo this background change. We'll start here. I'm going to start with a background photo. So to add a photo, let me actually search. I'm going to show people how to get more subscribers on YouTube. Okay, so let me see what if I search for YouTube, what I get here. And let's see what a good background is. There we go. I'll choose this one right here. And you could see the ones that say free as you go over them are free. So if I select this, it's going to add it over here. But some will have this crown option. Now, this is one of the main reasons I recommend people upgrading to the pro option after they use this for a while, because the pro option gives you so many more options with pictures and videos and music. And you'll see the crown as you go through. You see a lot of them have the crown option, but there's a good amount of free choices too. Okay, so this has been added now, this picture. And if you press upload right here, it will have the same effect where it lets you upload your own picture right here where it says upload media. You could bring your own images or photos from your computer. So you don't have to use what's over here, but this is really, really easy to use. Now, with each image or photo that's added here, again, this white area is called my canvas. I could move things around, so I could put it in this corner if I want to, or this corner. In this case, I want to stretch it out to fit my whole uh, canvas right here, okay? So I'll stretch it out. Another option you have is you could actually right-click on any of these here and set them as a background image. So let me try that. And it made it perfect size to my background. Okay, so here's my background image. Again, you could choose any image and make it the background image like that, or you could just put it on top. So if I choose this icon, for example, this photo, you see this one, I could go ahead and shrink this down in this case and put it somewhere in the corner. So you could layer the pictures on top of each other. Okay, this is called layering. This is your background layer. This is the layer on top of that layer. Now this works like Photoshop too, the same way where the layering of different types of elements like photos and text work this way. Whatever is in the front will cover what's in the back. This is now laying on top of the background. Now I'm gonna select this one, okay, this image, and you have some options every time you select something and they appear on top. Okay, so the left side lets you put things into your canvas and the top banner lets you edit any of those things. So let's go ahead and click the background color. This will create a default background color okay, on top of our image. So if I select one of them, you see it covers my image. That's not what I wanna do here. So background color is not gonna help me in this case, but it is useful if you don't wanna add an image as your background, you want a solid color instead to start from. Then let's go to effects here. Effects is useful because it lets you basically create these type of effects without you really knowing anything about effect creation. Okay, so there's some options available. In the case of using images, I usually just use a filter. And let me just click on some of them and see how it's changing our image. And you have an intensity filter. So from zero, where it's doing nothing, or from one where it's doing nothing to 100 where it's full, and about 50 is the default. Okay, so this is really useful to kind of create a cool look to your images. Let's go with this. Then you have the adjust filter. Now this has a lot of options, very, very useful, makes editing images really easy. So brightness, contrast, you could actually play with any of these sliders, make things black and white or really fully saturated with the saturation slider. Blur is really cool because you could blur things in the background, like this is actually what I'm going to do because I want my text to pop in front of this and vignettes really cool, look at what it's doing to the edges right here, making them darker to 
put your focus in the center. You could go ahead and crop any image. I don't want to do that in this case. And you could flip any image. And animation is just more designed if you create a video out of this. This is not going to work for a photo because obviously photo can't have an animation to it. It's just one image. Then you have your transparency slider here, especially if you have something on top of another one. You could go ahead and reduce the transparency. Transparency just means something is see-through. So if it's 100% see-through, you see behind it, which was that white canvas. And anywhere in between is just showing you what's behind it. Okay, so that's useful in some cases. And when you're happy with what you've done with something, you could lock it so you don't accidentally make other adjustments to it. So if I lock it, you could see this top banner goes away and I can't even delete it. So I would have to unlock it to do that. But I usually lock something if I'm done working on it. So then I don't accidentally do anything to it. Okay, now we could add elements. So I added a photo. Let's go add elements. I want to actually create a shape here and then right on top of that shape. So let's see, this is pretty cool, this note. I'll grab that and put it over here. And let's put it on this side maybe, okay? And you could, again, with any shape, go ahead and size it the way you want to. And I'll put it right over here. And you have a ton of different options here. Let me see, actually, for icons. Let me look up YouTube again. And let's see what they have for YouTube icons. And there we go, there's a few options here. So again, I could, if I wanted to, I could grab one of these and then put it somewhere. So I'll put this on the car, top corner, for example. Okay, you get the idea. These are elements. There's a ton, a ton of options available for elements in Canva. So with this shape, I'm going to select it. And I have some color options here. So I'm going to select my colors and see if I could change this to be something else. So I could have it to be white or blue. I'm going to have just a white one here. And I'm going to write some text on it, okay? Actually, let's see what black looks like. White text on that might be good. I have my element. Let's go to text because usually I'm overdoing this just to show you different elements. I wouldn't have all these elements on top of an image. I would really keep it as simple as possible or use some of the templates to help me out. But right now, I could go ahead and add text. Okay, so with text, you see you have some options over here to choose from. Or you could just go on top and add a heading, for example. Okay, I'll select that. And I'm going to go ahead and with this selected, change the color of it. So I added it. Now you see you get a top banner again for changing it. I'm going to select the text color and make this white. Okay, because it's going to go on top of black. Now it's going to actually, if I have it selected, let you change the font size and font style. So let's see, this is probably a good one or this one. Yeah, that's pretty good. And size is 90. That's okay. And italic, I don't want to do that. Center, it doesn't matter because it's one sentence, one line. And you have some options like FX over here too. This is kind of like Microsoft Word back in the day type of effects. But drop shadow is sometimes useful. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. So now I could grab this text and put it where I want. So I'll put it over here. And then again, as always, I could grab the corners to make it smaller. And you see it's changing the font size up here. So I could shrink it or make it bigger here. Okay. So to edit the text, I'll double click it and type my own text. Okay. How to, I'll make it capital here. So I'll do cap lock, how to get more. Okay, so this is the video about that. So now I could actually align it. Let me go ahead and select the whole thing because it's just doing one sentence. So I'll select everything, just grab with my mouse and I'll align center like this, okay? And I'll click away and I'll grab it and put it in the middle. Let me go ahead and actually delete this one. It just doesn't fit what I'm doing here. You want it to be cleaner than what I have here, meaning less elements, the better. And I'm going to click on my background and go ahead and unlock it. And I'm going to stretch it out. Okay. So I'm going to detach it from the background so I could actually have more control over it. And I'll make it much, much bigger so I could bring it to this side. This has become my foreground instead of my background. So how do I bring this all the way to the back? Well, you got this position option right here. Click this and it says take it backwards or to the back. Okay, so I'll take it to the back and there you go. You moved it to the back and I didn't have to make it my background. It's just a regular image, but it's moved all the way to the back. 
I'll make sure it covers my whole canvas here. When you go beyond the canvas, you see the line is just basically stretches out beyond your canvas, which is okay. This is in the right place and I could still edit any one of these elements. I could select this and try different colors now to see how that would look. Let's see how that looks if it was red. Let's go with this. It really makes the text pop. This is going to really work good as a YouTube thumbnail with big text and this background. I don't know if I like the yellow, so I'm going to change the border back to white. Okay, there we go. And this gray color is this background color, which is okay. Now, if I don't like something here, I could just click on it and just press delete right here, this garbage can, and that element's gone. And this seems to work okay without that element. And I'll, I could even stretch it out. And it's very readable because I blurred the background, so I like it. Okay, so I started with a photo, added elements, added my text. And let's say I'm happy with this result and I don't wanna edit anything else. All I have to do is go to the download option right here, press this, and I'll show you a couple options here. It says suggested PNG. This is just how the image is really getting compressed for the web. So you could do it as a JPEG or PNG. Those are probably the most frequently used options here. So, but I'm gonna go with the suggested as a PNG. The size is the size. So that's what I chose in the beginning. So usually you would just choose a size based on what you're using this for. Transparent background is another option for paid subscription Canva Pro. And I love this option. I use it on Photoshop all the time for creating logos or graphics where the background has to be transparent. In this case, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be transparent. And then you press download, okay? And it takes a second to basically compress and get your image ready. And there you go. It's downloaded right here to my computer. It's inside of my download folder. And this is gonna tell me more about Canva Pro, right? So never pay for images, videos, and audio. It's gonna have all of them there for you. You could have transparent backgrounds and you could turn one graphic into many graphics without having to resize them. Another huge benefit of the paid option. You don't have to create a bunch of different things for a bunch of platforms. You create it one time and it will resize them all for you, okay? And it has a free trial. So if you wanna do that, I do have a link to that in the description. Anytime when you're done with something, I did save it, but now I just wanna go back to home and it's gonna bring you to the home page where you could start over with a new design and everything that you've created will be under your design. So you could always click this to edit something you've created in the past. And that's your crash course on Canva if you're new to the platform. Again, watch my video on the mobile app. So then you're comfortable jumping between a computer and the mobile app for creating any graphic designs that you need. And watch my video on Photoshop just to compare the two, okay? And if you like Photoshop better, Photoshop is much more advanced, but it's much harder to get started with if you're brand new to the world of graphic design. But I use Photoshop more often than Canva just because I've used it for a long time. I'm very comfortable with it and it's a lot more powerful. But for basic designs, Canva should do the job for you, especially with Canva Pro and having all the options at your fingertips, okay? I hope you found this useful. Make sure you subscribe for easy to follow content. I create these every single day with a thousand videos on this channel. And I hope to catch you next time. Thanks for watching.